Transforming waste into art is a hopeful act. It's like you're rebirthing something old into something new and at the same time you're helping the environment. What is thought of as waste or rubbish all of a sudden is given another life, a new life. It's a way that I can help out and it's putting my passion you know, to good use. For me I like the fact that I can change someone's perception. This exhibition is very important because the world is drowning in waste. This exhibition has been a dream of mine for quite some time actually. So for 18 months I scoured around art galleries and whatever. In fact they had to tell me to stop because I found just too many people. These exhibitions are put on by Foundation Friends which is an arm of the gardens. The process really of choosing the artist is that I wanted a broad section of works to appeal to the public really because at the moment we are a huge use and throw away generation. But it's very important to us because number one, this is a scientific institution and it's a learning institution. And we're hoping that through this exhibition, people will realise that things they throw away can have a second life. And this new life is incredibly interesting and beautiful and something you want to keep. I think of myself as a maker and a creator. Every bottle I get in, I look at it and I think, what could you be? <laughs> How can I expand the lifespan of just everyday consumables? Everything has so much potential and yeah, often we just discard it. I grew up in Switzerland where we have a very highly efficient waste system. So when I came to Australia and there was no infrastructure like this, I was, I was in total shock. I think that sort of made me turn to discarded materials more and more. I hated going to the shops buying art materials because art materials were all around me. And I just needed to give it a new life and the context in my work. When I went and visited bushfire scenes, a matter of weeks after the fires had swept through the Blue Mountains, I was in awe. Visually, it was just mind-blowing to, to see that, you know, the charred landscape, and it, it just went on. There was no life. Picking up the charcoal to depict bird life felt like a, like a really nice thing to do to bring attention to you know, what they suffered as well. A lot of my work and practice and thinking is about transforming things I find into artwork. I like giving the old and busted a new life. I think the first thing I made was a coffee table, but I can just remember the, just the sheer joy and looking at it and, and the colours and I was just so mesmerised and uh, just really proud and, and excited. So the fact that I get to create a piece that hopefully is going to be in someone's life for a long time and you know at the same time get to raise awareness about sustainability and I get to transfer my skills into teaching my students. I teach woodwork and design tech. I've had a boy come and bring in skateboards in his lunchtime asking if we can make a chopping board together and laser cut his mum's uh, sort of name for a birthday present. I guess it's it's sort of special that I can teach kids skills. Uh, but also the fact that they get a bit of a kick out of it as well is pretty cool. The process of the kintsugi mending, you see the dramatic transformation from a scattered broken pieces into a, like a scarred surface with lots of bandages. And instead of hiding, I would start enhancing the broken piece, but beautifully. And that dramatic changes are always, even now, I surprise myself. Each piece is, there's a, the reason that they are with me, that they needed to be repaired, where they come from, and what stage they went through, it's even though it's an object. And I think of them when I repair, and I'm putting all the scattered memory and history together, and then becomes another piece 
but more beautiful, and then go back to their home and then start their new life. I really like the idea of not making mass-produced fashion. As soon as I discovered op shops, that was when I realised that fashion was more interesting when you chose something that was unique to everybody else. The most exciting part is always the treasure hunt to find the ultimate piece of fabric or a garment made from a special design or a beautiful pattern. It really does feel like a special moment that that piece has been waiting to be found. Fashion to me is about an expression. So I like to share in the experience of expressing our identity through something like clothes. Just felt like if I was going to put all of these fashion skills and my experience uh, out there, then I'd like to do it for a good purpose and this feels like the right thing to do. Working with nature, I love that it has that feeling of it had lived many lives and then it's rebirthed and reformed into something new, into something that eventually will live in a new space and be loved for a lot, a lot longer. As a creative being, it's a great position to be in to kind of just create that conversation and that awareness and that awakening of what we need to do to rescue our environment and do what we can for you know future generations. We're all participating in this by being part of a show where everybody's coming together and seeing so many different ways that recycled materials can be turned into art. I'd like the audience of the exhibition to start reimagining the object surrounding us. The thinking is important, the research is important, but it's always about the doing. You can do every day something. You don't need to be an artist, you don't need to be a designer. It starts a conversation like, what's that made out of? Recycled skateboards. Oh, didn't know you can make things out of recycled skateboards. Those little conversations are the ones that start it. And then, you know, from where it goes from there is up to the individual. But I think it's good just having that sort of conversation started in the first place.